Hello everybody, it's Marie from Skeletal Rama again. Welcome back to my channel, Gamera Hashiv. So, um, welcome to episode two of the Allison Jr. edition. Um, so in this episode, we are going to be looking at paint choices, wallpapers, and we're gonna take care of painting um, the pieces that we want painted before we put everything together. So, hope you enjoy. So while that dries out there, we can start on our next step, which is going to be painting. All right. So for painting, you have a lot of different choices. Um, you can use acrylic paint, you can use all kinds of stuff. I prefer to use house paint because I'm building a dollhouse, right? So if I want the finish to look like a regular house, I use house paint. You can get these little samples, which like if you're redoing your house and you're going to try a couple different paint colors, you're not really sure. I think they're like four or five dollars. It's a really good price. Um, I was able to do the entire outside of that Allison Jr. with about one, no, it wasn't this one. Let's say about one and a half of one of these things here. Luckily, I saved the paint from it. So I have the exact paint colors so it'll match the trim and it'll match the base of it. Um, I don't know if I've got enough of this paint, so I'm probably gonna end up having to get another one. But the nice thing is you can take this into Home Depot or wherever you got it this tells them exactly which paint it is. So you don't have to worry about it. And they have, this. <laughs> these ones have such silly names. We've got Dark Secret. We have Unimaginable. Hey, Roger, what should we call this? I don't know. I can't think of anything. Oh, perfect. Unimaginable. And then Hidden Sea Glass. That would hurt, wouldn't it? Um, but anyways, that's the colors I use. These are the PPG. And then for the new one, these are the paints for that. Um, we have Diva Glam. Hmm, hot pink. We have Lawn Party. That sounds like a uh, safe search would not uh, return any results, but the other one probably would. And then Blackout. That's what you did before you had your lawn party. I don't know. But anyway, <clears throat> so it's basically going to be, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the green or the pink, like the mint or the pink as the base color of the house. Haven't decided yet and have the blackest accent. That one's going to be fun because I'm going to do some of the exterior pieces stained. So I saw a really cool picture where somebody did one and it looks so good. So I'm totally sealing that, right? So we have our paint here. And we're going to need the black for now. And I don't know if I'm going to have enough for the whole thing. You know, I guess I'll find out. Um, but so what you do is you don't sand them first. You're going to paint them first and then after you paint them the first layer you're going to sand that layer um, with your and then put your final layer on you can prime it if you want to but just remember every layer of this you're adding mass to it so we got that going for us there um, the interior walls i don't paint because i'm going to wallpaper them um, so before i start any of this i'll show you what we're going to do to make wallpapering much easier because again you can wallpaper it before you put it together if you want, but when you put the walls together, they're going to look kind of weird. Sometimes you can see that gap, but when you're putting the paper on live, you don't so much have to worry about that. But you do have to worry about the windows, so I'll show you an easy way to get around that. We also want to double check our windows. So this window should be set up enough where I can very gently just place it in here and make sure it's going to fit nice and flush. So yes, I got my corners done just good enough. Check this one, make sure it's good, and it is. Flip it over, check the outside. I mean, there's oodles of room here, so I don't know what they're tripping about, but anyways, yes, they fit just fine. So we're good on our windows. Okay, so to do wallpaper, let me grab some stuff. I'll be right back. So in order to do the wallpaper, I'm going to make templates of all of this, okay? So... I have here just regular paper. So your floors are going to fit in like so, right? That's so it in fit. So it's going to fit in like so. So our paper is going to be basically this raised part here, okay? So this raised area here up to the top, this part up to here, it's got like a groove where the, um, you know, it's going to sit around that base piece. So we just need to do this area and this area for this one. Okay, 
These are going to be our sides. These will be nice and easy to make a template for, but they are two different sizes. So you got to make sure that you um, do both of them. And then on this one, you're going to have the same thing here. So you've got that part that the center floor is going to go in and the part that your bottom floor is going to go on. So you just want this part here. It's a little trickier with this only because um, of getting it to match up here, but there's a way to do it. So we're going to use regular copy paper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line my copy paper up right here with the end. I'm going to go ahead and line this one up straight too. Why not? And then I'm going to grab my scissors because I don't want to waste a ton of it. But I'll cut myself a little strip here. Does it matter if it's straight? Clearly it doesn't. So I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to line this up here like so. Make sure it's lined up and it's nice and straight everywhere. And I'm going to tape it. So this is the same way I did the template for the um, base of the Alice project. I'm going to tape this here. I'm not going to go all the way out to the edge because I'm going to end up cutting that off. Okay, so we've got this one down here. And of course I left the other one in place. Why wouldn't I do that? Mm. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to sit it on here. And you can see the edges from where you're sitting. I'm just going to line these up. Make sure they're lined up really good. This one I do want my pencil for. Does it have any lead in there? Yes. I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to draw a line right here. Okay. And it's not going to do anything. <laughs> Damn it. All right, fine. We'll turn you around this way then. You want to be like that. So at least I can see. I got my other pencil. That one's dying. Or I guess I'm using a sharpie then. Okay. Well, I don't like using a sharpie for this just because I don't want to get ink on there. But then again, I'm going to be painting that part black anyway. So, okay. So I do the same thing. I'm going to line it up so it's nice and square. here and seriously definitely want this square because this is what you're going to cut out your wallpaper with okay and you don't have to do wallpaper you can always just paint it all right we're going to go right next to the house what in the hell? Really? Okay, you know what? Looks like I'm going to have to stand up for this. Because clearly it's me. Clearly the problem is me. Like, we didn't know that. There we go. Okay. Oh, that's much better. So now since I'm doing this... For something I want to be straight, I'm going to give myself a slight advantage. I'm just going to use a paper trimmer so I know I have a straight edge. So I line that up. This has like a little wire thing in it that you line it up with. We're just going to do that. Okay. Now that we've done that, we don't want to just assume that it's right because then it'll guaranteed be wrong all right so this is the bottom floor because this is going to hook on to your bottom part i think i don't know i'm calling it the bottom floor we'll be able to tell okay so i'm gonna put it on here and make sure yes this does line up really good um any parts that don't you know, that's when you can do a little bit of trimming once you get it glued in place you can sand it i usually sand the edges of it anyway Another very important thing is I need to put on here, let's put base and front. It's not as important with this as it is when you get into having windows. Um, because my luck, I would put this face down and trace it out and cut the wrong way and end up having it fit perfectly backwards. We don't want that. Okay, so this is the base front piece. And so I'm going to do that for this one, this one these etc and i will come back to you
And so I'm doing the one that has the window, which I thought, hey, it'd probably be smart to tell you guys how to do that. So we're going to do the same sort of thing. Let's stand up here. Okay, and then you're going to trace out the window as best you can. <laughs> For some reason, this is just not wanting to trace very good, but... Okay, so I'm going to take this off here for a minute. The key is, this is the part that was con contacting the piece. I'm going to flip this over in a spot that I know isn't going to be covered or cut out or whatever, and I'm going to put base front. Okay, so this is what my surface paper needs to be. And so I can just take this. And kind of fold it. And, there we go. and then I will cut to the corners. Because you're not going to get that. I mean, you can put this in the paper trimmer. It'll kind of work. But I'm not very good at doing that. This way you know exactly where your corners are. smaller scissors and I'll just basically cut these pieces off. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I would, when I was cutting my, um, and you'll see when we go do the wallpaper, when I'm cutting the wallpaper, you know, I'm going to want to probably use a ruler instead of doing this particular method just to make sure everything's nice and straight. Um, and if you're going to err, err on the side of leaving a little too much rather than taking a little too much away if you can. Easier said than done. Come on. Always the trick though is to get this thing lined up. <laughs> I could have used my craft knife for it too. It would have been fine, but knowing me, I would go over the edges a little bit. And, you know, it doesn't matter what we call these. I mean, I call them base. That could end up, that's actually the top floor. I don't know. Um, but as long as they're all named the same thing, you will cut them out of the same paper. So everything will be okay. Because you'll know when you go to put it in exactly where it should go, right? All right. So one more window one to do, and I will be right back. So we have all of the patterns for the wallpaper done. So we've got the one for the two that have the windows. We got the base and we got the top with their windows cut out. The other big long piece, the base and the top. And then these were those two side piece weird ones. These ones here. Um, so I put their number on them since they didn't really have a name. Um, and this one, if you'll notice, I've got its name, and then I have here it says plus 1 16th. I cut it in a little too far. So when I went to put it back on its piece, is it this one? Yeah. I went to put it back on here. See how you see a little bit of that wood showing? So I know to just overcorrect by about 1 16th of an inch. And if anything, I can sand it back down. So that's our patterns. So now we can paint some stuff. So. The pieces we're going to be painting, these are going to make up the sides of it. So we want the side where it touches um, the house to be black also, because that way it won't stand out when you look at it. You won't notice that. We have the roof here. And we have this piece. And this piece. And also the middle floor. So we're not going to do anything to this. This is our wood flooring, but we will want to paint the ceiling. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate them. The ones that we're going to do ceilings for, which is going to be this piece here, um, kind of by color, right? Because I'm also not going to do the trim pieces yet, because honestly, I can't remember whether it's purple or teal. <laughs> I'll have to go there out there and find out. 
Um, so on this one, we don't need to paint the inside because we're wallpapering it. And the glue and the paint won't, won't work well together anyway. So you want to make sure you're not painting on accident anything where you're going to be gluing stuff. So um, normally where I've got the edge of the dollhouse, you can see it was black. I didn't paint that until I had it put together. And then I painted it so that way I wouldn't mess it up. Um, but before I put the wallpaper, because I kind of went over these edges a little bit too. So that, um, you know, if you saw between the wallpaper, you would see black and not this color. Okay, so we're going to do the outside of this and this in the black. This is the roof. So one side of it is going to be a ceiling, but the other side of it does need to be black. I don't think this matters, which I hope it doesn't matter because I'm going to paint one side of it white and one side of it black. So that's how that's going to go. Um, we're not going to mess with painting our interior windows yet because... Um, on the inside, I like them stained, but on the outside, they'll need a color. So two of them will be stained and two of them will be painted. Um, but we're going to let those sit there. So, all right, let me get some stuff together. I'll be right back. All right, so we are ready to paint this. Um, and so they tell you in the instructions, and I think I mentioned it, but I can't remember now. Um, you don't want to sand this first. You're going to paint it first so that you can get the paint to soak in nicely to the fibers. It's going to look kind of cruddy and whatever. Um, as soon as it's completely dry, you're going to sand it really good. And then you're going to paint the second time. And then the second coat is the, the nice finished coat that looks really good. Um, so we have our dark secret. Um, so I've kind of shaken it up a little bit, but I'm not going to count on that working completely. Come on, get the top off. Whee! Okay. Because see, look, it's got it's kind of all weird. Um, so that's what I've got my um, chopstick for. I'm going to stir it up real good. There's no way this is going to paint the whole thing, and I know that. Um, I'm hoping to be able to get at least one coat, um, like say, especially on the larger pieces. And uh, somebody's been bugging me to go to Home Depot tomorrow anyway, so it's fine. I'll do that. And then I have this. This is a, an edging brush that you use. I got it specifically for this, but it turns out it's, it's really good for painting your rooms and stuff in your house, too. So I used it for that. Okay, so I'm going to get painting. I'm going to fast forward through this, and I'll get as much as I can painted. first piece and so if you notice when I was doing it I was trying to go in the same direction as these um, slats are because I don't want the paint to kind of build up in the edges and look you know like a, a it's going to throw it off the scale actually if you have it kind of built up in the edges so when you're done you want to kind of take a look at it from a bunch of different angles to make sure you didn't miss any of the undersides of any of the boards and I kind of did right there so I'm going to kind of go a little tiny bit more. There we go. I'm going to go, see I'm kind of angling my brush so it's kind of hitting the undersides of those boards. That's the most important part that you want to hit. Because it's real easy to not see it and then put your house together and then you see it. That's the last time you want to see it, I tell you what. Okay, and so going right here like this on these edges, I'm just going here and I'm letting the brush kind of come up this way. What that does is that keeps my edge fairly clean. There was a little blurb there, a little bit here, but not much at all. So that way I don't have to worry about the glue um, not wanting to stick. Same with the top. 
And with the bottom, bottom got a little bit more, um, I believe on this one, one of these I do end up kind of doing that, but this is something I can get after I put it together if I go, oh yeah, that is going to be exposed. Um, so I've got this one piece here, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the rest of the pieces and I will come back to you when I'm done. So, um, everything, most of the stuff has been painted, um, now with the darker color, um, and it's actually dry because this is the next day. Um, so I did go to, um, Home Depot and I forgot to do what I said I was going to do, which is bring this with me. So I went and looked and, and I don't know, maybe this is some dark secret of the paint industry or whatever, but I went looking in PPG stuff for the color sample because I remember the name because it's so ridiculous, right? But it wasn't there. I'm like, oh crap. So just for the heck of it, I went and looked over at the bear paint and guess what? They have dark secret and it's the same color. So yeah, I'm sure that's the same company, but they're just pretending to be two. Who knows? But anyways, so I got some more paint. Um, and then I did separate out the rest of these pieces um, based on what my other, the main dollhouse um, accessories are. So the gingerbread and these little um, decorative pieces, these are all going to be in the purple. And these trim pieces, <clears throat> the outer windows, and then this business here, these are going to be in the teal. And then I've got my windows that I'm going to stain, and that's going to be in my Verisane um, cognac stain. I love this stain. It's my favorite. Um, but then when I was out there, I thought, you know what might be a good idea before we put the black away is maybe we should go ahead and do our base because it's dry now. So I'm going to get this stuff kind of moved over to the side, trying to keep it somewhat organized. I don't know how that's going to work. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't work. I didn't know. Alright, so we can go ahead and take our base and we'll sit it over here with the other one. And we have our nice little taped up frame here, so we're going to go ahead and remove our tape. Um, and so this we're going to paint the same dark color as we paint uh, the walls and all of that. And that way we can let this dry. And it will be good to go. Ooh, and we can make a lot of loud noise with it. That's the worst part of the painter's tape is pulling the 600 miles of it off that you put on there. But it held it very straight, so that's good. Alright, voila! So I'm going to go ahead and use the new batch of paint, so that way, even if there is some kind of slight color difference between the two, um, it'll at least be consistently inconsistent. That makes sense, right? And we're going to do a different brush for this one. No, it's a little too long. Yeah, no, that's ridiculous. Okay, there we go. See, problem is I use a lot of these for Mod Podge and stuff too. And usually I clean them out pretty good, but not always. Okay, this will work. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and paint this. Um, and I'll do it on fast forward. So it's not quite as boring. I've got my chopstick here. And I mean, even though I just got it and it just got mixed, I'm still going to mix it up anyway just to make sure. As you can see, this is a bit shorter because I broke off the other part. I was going to use it to stir those, but then I remembered that this existed. So. All right, so I'll get this nice and painted up. Okay, scratch this. We're going back to this because this does leave a lot nicer looking finish on it. Yeah, see, and now that's the difference too. And here, let me get the other side real quick. Um, I'll finish this side and then I'll show you the other side because I didn't realize it, it made that huge of a difference. But okay, so here's my regular paintbrush, right? 
So I'm gonna paint on here. See how it's kind of, it's kind of thin and you can sort of see through it. I mean, not on the end as much, but see how thin that looks? And so now I'm grabbing the actual house paint style paintbrush. I mean, look at that. I didn't even realize it made that big of a difference, but yeah. So, which is nice because this, this brush made quick work of um, the other pieces that I painted uh, last night because I know when I painted it originally that, uh, granted I'm painting a, a whole full house, but it did seem to take longer that way. This way it was really fast, which is kind of surprising. Although we need to kind of get that like that. Um, I'm trying not to get it on the edges because again, the glue doesn't like to stick to paint. Um, so whichever part of it has the least paint or, you know, worst case scenario, if you get paint on it, just sand it. It's not gonna hurt nothing. If you just sand it right off. It's real hard to do a narrow area like this and not get it on the edges. <laughs> go with that. So we have this now the same color as everything else. I'm going to sit this over, let this dry. I'll be right back to you. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to clean this stuff here up and then I'll come back and we'll do all of that stuff there. So I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, so next up on Paint Fest 2023, I think we're going to go ahead and stain these because there's just two pieces. Um, so again, I'm using the Varathane wood stain and cognac, which I love. And again, you want to kind of swirl it around. You don't really want to shake it up because you don't want to A, get a bunch of bubbles in it, but B, I know this lid would be on tight unless I went to shake it up, in which case it would reveal to have been on the very loose. So, got my, and I love these. They give them to you when you buy a thing of paint. And they are just massively useful to get these tops off of here. All right. So there we are. So again, with wood stain, just like with anything else, you're gonna wanna stir it up pretty good. The nice thing is you got your chopstick here. The reason I'm using a nicer chopstick is I've stirred it up and now I can wipe it off on this rag and now I have <laughs> somewhat stained. And look, it's a table leg. Uh, so anyways, we're gonna use this right here. So this is going to go on the interior here. So all you're gonna see is this surface, this surface, and this surface. So we don't have to worry about staining this because it's not gonna be seen. And plus it could interfere with the gluing. So we're not gonna worry about it at all. We're just gonna do these surfaces here. So put on fast forward while I do that. Real quick, while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna see if I can find my gloves because every time I do this, I get upset because I get stain all over my hands. And I'm like, I should have worn gloves. I have them, I just need to find them. So I'll be right back. Ta-da! Okay, and so for once in my life, I actually put them in the place you would expect them to be, which is the toolbox. So see, it happens to everybody at some point. All right. Back to staining. Okay, ta-da. So we got that, we got that surface. There's a little bit on the back. There's always gonna be, but no getting around that so all you do is basically and that's how easy it is to stain by the way you can use a brush if you want um, some people prefer it you can see a little bit here this is what happens when you have wood glue um, that dries on the surface and so it doesn't like to take the stain very well but still do pretty good but with this stuff the key is first of all to have really good stain and this varicine is very good stain I love it it's my favorite um, and I just wipe it on as you saw with the rag of course I get it everywhere but wipe it on and you kind of let it sit there and then you wipe you take a clean part of it and you wipe it off and that's what it leaves behind so I'm gonna set this side to dry I'll do the other one and I will come back to you 
Okay, so I have wiped the stain off the gloves as best I can because I'm cheap and I'm not gonna get a new pair of gloves for them. Anyway, so uh, we have the purple paint out. So now we're gonna do these little decorative bits. These kind of go up under um, sort of the roof area. It's part of the little gingerbread kind of trim. Um, and then this trim here. So now when we do these, the way they're going to attach is they're gonna glue on this end and this end and this bottom part. So we don't need to worry about painting those. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these um, on fast forward and I will join you back when they're ready. everything on the first side. So we're gonna let this dry a bit. Um, I forgot to tell you on these again, so it's gluing surface is gonna be here and here. So I'm leaving those and I'm just doing the top and this side here. And I usually, um, I'll do the, the side, like the fiddly side, especially, seriously, especially on these. I do it on my first pass just so I can get it out of the way. And then once I do these, I go back and check to make sure I didn't leave any because it'll tend to like kind of pool up around on the edges for you. So I make sure I flatten all of that down because again, at this scale, if you have a big blob of, of paint like that, it's really going to throw people's eyes off. So I will join you back after I have finished painting the other side of these to move on to our next color. Okay, so you can see we got all the purple stuff drawing over here. So now it is time for our hidden sea glass experience. Get this stirred up. And this is the rest of the chopstick. Be very careful when you bring it over here that you don't hit your windows that you have drying with the stain. I missed that by like a half an inch. Jesus. Okay, so with these, again, your gluing surface is going to be on the back side of this. So you're going to do the top side and then the edges. This one, your gluing surface is going to be on the end of here. You are going to glue this onto this, but you need to paint it or it's going to look stupid, right? So we're going to go ahead and paint everything but one end of these. These will paint the whole thing. There's no nice way to do these. Um, sometimes you can get like a chopstick and put it in here, but the holes on these, I'm not sure if you can see, they're rather large. So they're way too big for a regular toothpick. Um, so I'm just going to, I might see if I have a chopstick over there that they'll fit on, but otherwise I'm just going to hold it and paint half and hold it and paint the other half. And then same with our windows again. They're going to go in like this. So we're going to do this surface this side and this inside, because that's what you're going to see. You're not going to see necessarily this surface here. And you're definitely not going to see this one because this is what's going to glue down. Okay, put on fast forward and do more painting. Hold up a second. Seriously, I'm going to see if these match. 
<laughs> I may have saved myself approximately four minutes. So when I did the other dollhouse, I had two pieces of trim left over. I don't remember why, but I have a feeling these are, oh, darn, they're just slightly different size. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, in theory, that's on. <laughs> As you can see, I struggle with that a little bit. Not sure why, but as I drop my stuff. Um, so I'm gonna set this aside. So all this stuff is painted and ready to dry. Um, and again, with these, just make sure you're real careful um, to get any kind of drips and stuff out of these edges. You know, I, I tend to paint the inside first and the outside and then the flat surface, um, but you can really go in any order that you want. And then, you know, if you have any of those drips, just kind of keep brushing them with your brush until they go away because you don't want to lose any of your detail. So the only things left to paint are the um, the ones where it's got a ceiling. So the middle floor and the other side of that top piece. So I'm going to do those in just a white gesso. Um, you've just watched several colors of things being painted. Don't think y'all care about that. So um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and paint those and then the other pieces should be dry enough where we can do the sanding portion of it. So I will come back to you after that. All right, so that was it for episode two. And so uh, join me back in episode three where we're going to be doing something incredibly exciting. Sanding. No, it's not exciting. But anyways, it'll be happening um, along with um, some of the actual assembly of it. So see you then. Bien Bye. Bye. Thank you.